Welcome to the set of Hawk Talk. I know, I know, I know. You're worried that this is going to be about the number one rated coaches show in America, and it's not. Tonight, I'm here to introduce the highlight film for the 2000-2001 Hawks. Your Hawks, 26 and 7, regular season A-10 champs, undefeated in the field house, number 22 ranked team in America, and the team that had all of America talking. Where were you when it was 80 to 80 with less than a minute left? You'll never forget, and you'll never forget this film. Just like I'll never forget the phone call from Andy Reid, the letter from Larry Brown, the note from Larry Boa, and wow, the welcome back rally in the cafeteria hosted by the students. See, because they got it, the passion for St. Joe basketball, and you're gonna get it as you watch tonight. You'll well up, the memories will come flooding back, and it's all right, let it go. Passion for St. Joe basketball, it's what separates us from the rest. This film is gonna give you great memories. It's also gonna give you great hope for the future. I hope you enjoy it. Phil Martelli. Certainly not your average coach. Then again, his St. Joseph's University Hawks were certainly not your average team in the 2000-2001 season. Far from it. Yeah, there was still that wacky best-in-the-nation TV show and that ever-flapping mascot with a woman doing the flapping for the first time. But it always came back to basketball. Martelli and his Hawks. What a year it was. This St. Joseph squad would achieve both team and individual accolades that place it among the greatest in the storied history of round ball on Hawk Hill. The early non-conference games provided hints of what was to come, from the 50-point season-opening blowout of Western Carolina through the final second of a heart-stopping near-miss against number one-ranked Stanford in the NCAA tournament second round, these Hawks fulfilled all that their crimson and gray uniforms had come to symbolize in nearly a century of varsity sports at St. Joseph's. The accolades for this team were not bestowed, but earned. A trio of seniors were not among those receiving tangible individual honors. Instead, the three provided the anchor for this team. Frank Wilkins, Eric Woods, and Lionel Nagunu each had shining moments on the court, but it was their collective resolve for an Atlantic 10 Conference title 
and NCAA tournament bid that set the tone. Wilkins, the lone senior starter, proved his value time and again, including a memorable perfect shooting night in the key win at Dayton. His late block in the victory over Xavier was also memorable. Bounce to Fry, to McAfee. Crenshaw D's him up, they give it to Price, left side, he puts go up, long, long three, block, and grab by Crenshaw, that's it, that's it! But the fifth year man was perhaps most importantly a tangible link to the school's last NCAA tourney team in 1997. The other seniors, Woods and Nagunu, came off the bench. Each had flashes of outstanding play, but more importantly, they led the team from their co-captain roles at all times on the court, on the bench, or in the locker room. Their maturity and influence permeated their team. The senior trio even got a guest shot on their coach's Hawk Talk set. Delighted for the three of you because you've hung in. You are truly an example of all that's good, not only with St. Joe basketball, with St. Joe University. We're delighted that you got this chance. You know where the number one rated coach is shown. I don't know if I ever told you guys that because I don't go into ratings much with these guys. Um, but we're delighted to have you here, and I'm glad you had this experience before you graduate. Now your education at St. Joe's is complete. <laughs> it was the Hawk backcourt that garnered most of the individual attention during the year. Junior Marvin O'Connor and freshman phenom Jameer Nelson seemed to take turns attracting the attention of their school, their conference, and finally the entire nation with a flair for the dramatic. Nelson kept improving from his 11 point eight assist collegiate debut, seemingly raising the level of everyone around him. His growing notoriety finally reached national proportions when his last second heroics helped bring the Hawks back to an overtime win after trailing by five points in the final seconds against St. Bonaventure. 88-85, Green, missed it, rebound Wood to Nelson, down the floor, he's gonna pop along three! He got it! He got it! He got it! We've got overtime, folks, and they're going crazy. Jameer Nelson hit a 30-footer from the right. But it was Nelson's passing that wowed him the most. He tallied a school record 213 assists, shattering the single-season mark of 176 by Matt Dukas from way back in 1966. Nelson's growing legend led to National Freshman of the Year citations by numerous entities, including Sports Illustrated, ESPN and CBS. O'Connor, meanwhile, seemed to outperform even himself from game to game. His 18 points in the final regular season minute at LaSalle is the stuff of which legends are made. Trap again as you're going to foul. After the two missed free throws, O'Connor up and under. O'Connor with the three off the end. He drills it. Get in. Get some of these foul shots. He's really come on strong. O'Connor hits all three. Then it's a five-point game. O'Connor to three. Oh, my goodness. O'Connor has 12 points in the last 46 seconds, and he adds two more. O'Connor's got the ball in his hands. Guarded by Butler. O'Connor cranks up the three. He hits it again. By the time it was all over, O'Connor's name had been emblazoned on the minds of college basketball fans across the land. His gutty, heroic effort against Stanford not only converted thousands of New Hawk fans at the tournament, but also millions more watching nationwide. What a game for O'Connor, 15 for 20 field goal attempts, 37 points and five rebounds, and a heart as well. But let it not be lost that Marvelous Marvin became way more than just a scorer this season. His passing, rebounding, and defense will make him one of the nation's most watched players in 2002. Not as well known nationally, but just as important to the Hawks' success was the pair of junior frontliners who rounded out the starting five. Local product Bill Phillips, along with Canadian import Damian Reed. Reed set a new school standard in field goal shooting accuracy, converting nearly 62% of his shots. 
With a year to go, he has already cracked St. Joseph's top 25 list in rebounding and the top 10 column in block shot. A third-team academic All-America selection, Phillips' inside play placed him among the Atlantic 10's leading rebounders, while his shooting prowess inside the arc topped even that of Reed. Playing injured late in the year, he was the team's unsung hero, finishing second only to Nelson in assists and earning third-team all-conference laurels. Leading the bench brigade and all reserves in the league, in fact, was Naeem Crenshaw, who wound up earning the Loop's sixth man of the year honor, despite having sat out the first 10 games of the campaign. Evidence of his influence was obvious, as the team won 17 of its next 18 starts after his return. He was just the third Hawk ever to average double-figure scoring off the bench. Extensive talk about the ever-changing hairstyle of Russian sophomore Alex Sazanov still took a back seat to the observations about his continued improvement. As the third most prolific shot blocker in school history, the tallest Hawk ever combined those blocking and defensive skills with better offensive abilities than ever before. Also add in freshman role players Tyrone Barley, who never wavered in spelling Nelson at the point, and shooting specialist Jeff Miller. Walk-ons Mike Fairley and Phil Martelli Jr. often joined in on the fun that this team provided to its seemingly ever-growing legion of fans. And what those fans witnessed and helped nurture was a fitting pinnacle to a year in which the university celebrated its 150th anniversary. There were stunning victories all season long at Colorado, at Western Kentucky, at Temple, at St. Bonaventure, and at Dayton. There was an NCAA tournament win over ACC giant Georgia Tech. And who will ever forget the 33-point turnaround to whip Massachusetts at the Fieldhouse and clinch the league crown? The Fieldhouse fanatics saw and helped the Hawks to a perfect 11-0 record at their venerable home court, which rightfully was nicknamed the Alumni Memorial Madhouse. A school record tying 26 wins the regular season Atlantic 10 title, and a final poll ranking of number 22 became factual footnotes to the emotion, togetherness, and memories that these St. Joseph's University Hawks will leave in the hearts of all who followed them. The Hawk will never die.